We're really excited to be joined by our next guest, Julie Gordon White, the CEO of the Well for Women Entrepreneurs. Welcome. Hi, Jeff. Thanks for catching me here. Absolutely. Well, thanks for taking a few minutes. So, you were a speaker this year. So, what was yes. your presentation for the folks at home that didn't make it? Oh, absolutely. I had the pleasure of speaking about how to grow to a million. So, I help entrepreneurs grow their businesses to a million and then someday sell for a million or more. So, thanks uh, the question. Tips and tricks. What, is, what are some of the key things that people need to think about when they want to grow the business too much? Because that's kind of that first big hurdle when you get to a million dollar revenue of business. Right, right. It's challenging to, just to get to that first million. After that, you can really go. So, um, I really encourage entrepreneurs to think about reoccurring revenue in their business because especially in the beginning, there's a lot of feast and famine of income coming in. You don't know when it's going to come in next. So if you can create reoccurring revenues like a maintenance contracts or something that people consume every single month and you can fill it for them over and over. Right. Uh, I sold a plant rental business one time. So there's amazing, you know, so plant rental business. Yeah, so people would go and take plants into a corporate office okay. and they would maintain them and then they build them every single month. Or an online subscription-based business, which is super hot right now. Um, if you have a product, you can just drop ship it over and over after people buy it. Even the box industry is really hot right now. Get a box of the month. Right, 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 right. So finding a way to build reoccurring revenue in the business is golden. Now, are most of your clients um, service businesses or product businesses? Uh, both. So we have a lot of service companies. Usually, you know, one or two people have started it, and then product companies also um, a lot of food products and fashion lines and things like that. I work with a lot of women entrepreneurs, so we tend to get on that side. Okay. So people are like, ah, you know, they. What does it take to kind of get over the hump? You know, to kind of to take that first leap. What do you tell people? Because I'm sure a lot of people, you know, make a cool food item. The family's like, ah, oh, you should make this. How do you help them kind of get over the hump? What does it take for them to get over the hump to actually start Get business? started. Great question. You know, everybody needs a business plan, but I think sometimes when people think business plan, they think of a 40, 50 page document to take to a bank. I teach women to start with a one page plan. Really simple. Understand your vision. Why you're doing what you're doing. What is your um, big strategy? You know, what are you going to use to make your business successful over time? What are the maybe three objectives you know, that are measurable? How much money are you going to make? How many contacts are you going to New clients maybe, things like that. Um, so measurable objectives and then the action steps you need just to get started. You can do it just for a 90-day format. I actually teach a 21-day business plan to really help take a micro step forward. But 90 days is great and a one-year, one-page plan is fantastic. So that's an easy way to get started. And then what are the classic kind of pitfalls that most people fall into there? You know, I'm, I, I want to build a business around making some food product or a cute thing I sell, but you know, I don't have a clue about accounting. I'm not keeping track of my expenses beyond maybe my easy, you know, cost of goods sold. What are some of the pitfalls that people traditionally got to fall into? Well, that was the one of the topics I talked about today in, our, in my talk, is that you got to know your numbers. You have to understand the economic model of your business. You might make a really good thing, cookie, whatever it is, but is it profitable? Retail is a really difficult business to be profitable in, and you might love all the items in your store, but you might start not really enjoying your business if you're not making any money. So understand those numbers, I think, in the beginning, which will help in the long run. Um, the other thing is you just have to think bigger, you know? I think I think people get nervous about when they start, but just think about a bigger business that you might want to build, but start with a really small step. Right. That's a great way to kind of get over that hump. I'm going to be anxious, but think, I'm, I've got something great here, that's why I'm starting it. But just think big and start small. Now what about partnership? Because there's a lot of discussion about partnership. A partnership could be like a marriage, it could work, it could not work. But at the same time, when you're all by yourself, uh, it can be really difficult. You've got the, the pressure of, the, of getting the product out, you've got the pressure of the accounting, you've got the pressure of so many things, you know, suddenly permits and taxes and all kinds of stuff. Right. What do you kind of advise around kind of the partnership question and also, you know, potentially having somebody who's got a different set of skills than, than, than maybe the sure. initial person? Yeah. There's kind of two approaches to that. I, I've sold a lot of businesses where the partnership thing didn't work out so well. Because it's hard to have two visions that come together. You can also build community. You don't have to give away equity somebody else to have a partnership. Um, I bring women together using technology online. So we create a community over video and, and Facebook. So you can create a community so you don't have to feel alone. I heard recently that about 30% of entrepreneurs report that they're lonely because they're starting at their kitchen table, you know, like, here and into it. And it's hard. So you need to reach 
reach out and be a part of the community. And then if you feel like you would do better by having a second person or a third person as a partner, then be formal about it. You know, have that partnership agreement in place just in case things don't go right. And we say a business partnership is a partnership built on money, not love necessarily, so it's a little harder to keep together. So plan ahead just in case. Okay. So another big thing that's changed is, and you mentioned it, the community and the direct connection that you can now have with your customers. That's a good yeah. service. Didn't have that before, oh, that's right? right now via social media, Pinterest, Facebook, uh, Instagram, pick your favorite platform. You can direct this can connect directly with the customer. Yeah. How's that change the kind of the whole entrepreneurship game? Level the playing field. You know, before it used to cost a lot of money to have all of that interaction okay. and feedback tools with customers. Now you can go straight to your customers. I teach them to the fish where the fish are, so know where your customers are hanging out right. and go there, right. get involved, ask questions, serve them right where they are, and then you can really get all that rich information. And you know, it's just so much less expensive to start and grow a big business right. than it used to be. So use those tools to get the information you need so you can serve what people really are, are looking for. Because the other piece that used to be so hard was distribution, right? No matter what you had, how do you get it into the stores? How do you get people to get exposed to it? How do you get trial? But now with Amazon and all these other distribution methods, you're no longer in the box and there's a lot of ways that you can use existing distribution to get your stuff out of the budget. Absolutely, way. and I think in some ways there's a different challenge now because thinking about the best way to go about it, right? So you want to choose the, the one that's going to get you to where you want to go fastest, probably. Right. So being really thoughtful about choosing your distribution, where before it was just, how do I do it? Now right. it's, which, which challenge should I use? Right. All right, so Julia, I'll give you the last word before we sign off. How can people learn more? They want to grow their business to a million, sell it for many millions, yeah. where should they go? Oh, I would love to help them. They can come to growatthewill.com. Lots of free resources, courses. I do a 21-day business plan webinar every Wednesday at noon Pacific. Come try it out, have fun, and come grow at the well. So you can grow to a million and someday sell for a million. I like more than a million. Or sell more, for more than a million. More. Come on, Julie. Absolutely. All right, Julie Gordon White. I'm Jeff Frick. We're at the Intuit QuickBooks uh, Connect 2015 in Santa. 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 Thank you, California. Thanks for watching.